Hello, gentlemen, and welcome to section 6.5 entitled Reaction Diagrams and the Conservation of Matter. In the investigating section 6.5, we revisited endothermic and exothermic reactions. Today, let's review them. The endothermic process is when heat is absorbed from the surroundings, which increases the internal energy of the system. We're talking about heat energy. And what results is that the surroundings feel cold. Endothermic, endo means taking in, thermic means heat, so taking in heat is an endothermic process. Exothermic. Exothermic process is when heat energy is released to the surroundings, thus we feel it, which decreases the internal energy of the system. So your surroundings feel hot because heat is being released into the surroundings, meaning heat is vacating the system, which is the inside. Exo means leaving, like the word exit. Thermic means heat, so heat is leaving an exothermic reaction. One thing to note is that endothermic and exothermic, the words, can be used when describing both physical and chemical changes. It's up to you to use your knowledge to decide whether it's a physical or chemical change that's taking place, and then you can prescribe endo or exothermic to that particular change. Now, why is the topic of energy so important? Energy is important <clears throat> because in order for a chemical and physical change to occur, our reactants and uh, so our reactants must interact. When I say reactants, I mean you know the particles in our beaker, in our test tubes, they must interact together. And interact, I mean collide, literally colliding. So in order for particles to collide, they must have a certain kinetic energy. For those guys who, take, who have taken physics. You know, the kinetic energy is equal to one-half the mass of your object times the velocity squared. Now, kinetic energy is just a fancy way of saying the energy of motion. Anything that's in motion has kinetic energy. So when it has motion, it has the potential to collide. We want to, it must have enough kinetic energy to break existing bonds in order to form new bonds. Reactants have bonds. They gain energy, start colliding with each other, those bonds break. And then they rearrange to form new bonds in the form of your product. That's what we're talking about here. Now, the minimum amount of energy required for a chemical reaction. So in order for that chemical reaction to actually start and take place, the jumpstart that chemical reaction needs, the minimum amount of energy required for that to happen is called the activation energy, which has a symbol E sub A. So the activation energy for the reaction is the minimum amount of energy needed for that reaction to actually spontaneously start. Okay, something to note. In a chemical reaction, we just said that we have bonds breaking. When bonds break, that is an endothermic change, meaning energy is being absorbed. It requires energy. When bonds form with your products, energy is being released, and it's an exothermic process. Remember that. Now this next board seems a little congested, gentlemen, but work with me. Now we'll start on this side of this board here. So as products form, meaning in a chemical reaction, you react something together and as your products form, let's break it down. When <clears throat> bonds break, we know that heat is absorbed. When bonds form, we know that heat is released. Well, when your bond formation energy, the heat that's released, is greater than the heat that's been absorbed, like so, we call that an exothermic process. When the bond formation, meaning the heat that's been released, you can feel that heat being released, is greater than the heat absorbed, we get something that's exothermic and it feels like it feels hot because this is greater. Now, <clears throat> we can represent this difference with a diagram called an energy diagram. Pretty simple. Now here's an example using um, the process of cellular respiration. That's what we do in order to stay alive. We break down glucose. So glucose reacts with the oxygen that we breathe, breaking it down into carbon dioxide that we breathe out, water that we retain in our body, and energy that we use in the form of ATP. We'll talk about that later on. Now, this is exothermic reaction here. This graph looks a little complicated, but let's break it down. 
So my axes are potential energy on this side and reaction coordinate, which just means the process of the reaction. So process of reaction is going from the beginning of the reaction to the end of the reaction. That's all that means. Potential energy is stored energy. So energy that these chemicals have before they react are energies that are in the bonds, basically. So in the beginning, I have my reactants. Glucose plus oxygen gas. Now initially, in the black line here is my graph. So the black line, I start out with these products and they gain energy. They gain energy, there's potential energy on this side. They gain energy, and they reach the top here, and then they start forming their products, which are here. Carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Since energy is being produced, that is my exothermic reaction. Energy is being released at the end. Now, let's talk about what all these markings mean. As my reactants gain energy, we know that the minimum amount of energy needed to start your reaction is called your activation energy, so Ea. This hump here, from my beginning to the top of my hump, denoted by this dotted line, this is my activation energy. This is the amount of energy needed for this reaction to start. This reaction goes up, goes up, goes up, and then I finally have enough energy up here for it to start. At the very top where the star is, this is called my transition state. This is where all my atoms essentially are being rearranged in the process of being rearranged to form the products. Here they're being rearranged and then they go down like a roller coaster and form my products. That is energy being released here. And the difference between the potential energy that I started with here and the potential energy that I ended with down here with my products is known as this separation here, which is delta H. Delta H stands for the heat of the reaction, also called the change in enthalpy. It is simply the difference between the energy you had before the reaction and the energy you had after the reaction. And that's called the heat of the reaction. And this represents an exothermic process. You released heat afterwards. Okay, let's look at the opposite. If you have questions, write them down. As products form, we know that, again, we break bonds and heat's absorbed. We form bonds, heat is released. Now, if the heat absorbed in the beginning is greater than the heat that's released, it's an endothermic process. We see this naturally in nature, obviously, using, well, in the process of photosynthesis, when we look at plants. So plants use water, carbon dioxide in the air, and energy from sunlight to form sugar that they use to grow, oxygen that they release for us to breathe, and producing water that also helps them. Now, let's look at the endothermic reaction diagram or energy diagram for this process. We start out again with our reactants. We have carbon dioxide, water, and energy. <clears throat> This is used, and this reaction goes up, 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 up. We notice we have a much higher activation energy here. It goes up, and then finally it reaches our transition state, and it can go. Now, the difference, difference is here. I have you guys compare momentarily, but our activation energy is higher from here, our base point, where our reaction started, up to here. We reach our transition state, atoms rearrange, and they go down and we form our product. Now our product is at, here, over there is at a lower potential energy, up here it's at a higher potential energy. So our delta H is the distance from the base to where this reaction ended, the energy at which this reaction ended. That's our delta H. This is the heat of the reaction known as a change in enthalpy. And again, this is from the beginning of my reaction to the end of my reaction, the process of my reaction. So gentlemen, we'll talk more about this 
in class, but I just wanted to introduce you to energy diagrams. You can plot the energy, um, I guess, energy change for a given reaction. Take notes on this. Come to class with questions.